I know that Christmas is a very special time of year across our three islands of Grand Cayman, Cayman Brac and Little Cayman. The arrival of the Christmas breezes, end of the hurricane season, getting together with friends and family, the Christmas lights, beef, sorrel, memories of Cayman's past with seafarers returning home after long absences, decorating patios with sand. Lizzie and I are looking forward to spending one more Christmas with you. We leave at the end of March after four and a half years. It has been the privilege of my life to serve as your governor. When I gave my swearing in speech in Parliament in October 2018, I said I would fight your corner. I hope I have fulfilled that pledge and contributed to the jurisdiction moving forward. Perhaps the most impactful example of my officer's support over the last four years is the global pandemic, helping secure the test kits and vaccines, which saved many hundreds of lives, reassuring the public at over 70 press conferences and the emergency British Airways travel flights for stranded members of the community, organized by the hardworking staff in my small office. I am also pleased to have provided UK support in setting up a regiment for disaster response and during the global pandemic. I have promoted and defended our excellent financial services sector. I was part of the 2019 constitutional change negotiations, which modernised our relationship with the UK and set up a new police service commission, enhancing transparency and good governance. I have encouraged new funding to build improved prison facilities, championed new legislation on security and law and order, and advanced the human rights of all through the civil partnership legislation. My office has continued to provide technical funding in numerous areas, for example, a climate change risk assessment. We have also supported UK secondments for CBC, RSIPS and the Ministry of Health with further secondments being arranged for Ofreg and the Ministry of Transport. I have worked closely with our excellent Deputy Governor in supporting the civil service to deliver excellence to our community. And it is great to see our Deputy Governor back after his recent health scare. All of this work helps build a strong, constructive UK Cayman partnership, which is of mutual benefit for all of us. There have been some momentous occasions. Attending Her Late Majesty's funeral in Westminster Abbey with the Premier was an extraordinary one. The overseas territories were treated very well and rightly given a prominent place in line with Her Late Majesty's wishes. President Biden was even seated behind us. President Macron of France was even further behind. I enjoyed that as a British diplomat aware of the traditional rivalry with the French. I have very much enjoyed working closely with Premier Panton and value his strong integrity and good governance credentials. I fully support his vision of a sustainable and greener future for Cayman, as I think a majority of people on these islands do. We spent a lot of time together in London, going to numerous events, meeting many members of the UK Cabinet and the Royal Family. 2022 has witnessed many memorable moments. Her Majesty the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, plant a tree for the Jubilee, proclaiming King Charles III as King in our islands, a visit by the UK Overseas Territories Minister Milling, the Royal Navy ship HMS Medway visiting after Hurricane Ian brushed past us, the Lions celebrating 50 years, Elmsley Church celebrating 100 years, our first female Caymanian Chief Justice, Margaret Ramsey Hale, our first Caymanian Ombudsman, the first knighthoods for Cayman, Sir Alden McLaughlin and Sir Anthony Smelly since Sir Sir Vassal Johnson 30 years ago, the Cadet Corps' 20th anniversary, Aaron Jarvis's extraordinary success in the Gulf, the first cruise ship after COVID in March as tourism returned, the visit of the Privy Council, the 70th anniversary of the first commercial aircraft landing in Grand Cayman, and the return of the much-loved air show, including a UK Royal Air Force C-17. And I hope in future years we will see the RAF's Red Arrows. 
I do want to say a special thank you to, to Lizzie, my wife, who has given me wonderful support, not just in Cayman, but throughout my career. She won't want me to say this, but she has done much quietly behind the scenes, including volunteering at Jasmine, reading to children at John Gray, and playing oboe in the National Orchestra. She's also a member of the Caymanian Women's Quilting Group, which meets every Wednesday morning. Throughout our time here, we have felt very welcomed and at home. We have come to love and admire the islands, its people and its rich history, culture and heritage. You will always have a special place in our hearts and we have made so many friends. Of course, there have been many fun moments. Defeating the pirates in an actual sword fight and insisting that, if we, that we had to win if I was to take part. I am probably the first governor to actually defeat the pirates rather than be captured. Learning the steel pan and proudly being able to play about three and a half tunes vaguely resembling steel pan music, all thanks to the wonderful Earl Lapierre. I enjoyed listening to the caller to one radio station after the passing of the civil partnership legislation who said, send that governor home with a cup of tea. That was a nice came and kind touch. Or the anonymous person on CNS who said, Governor Roper changes his position more times than a Foster's shopping trolley. I never did work out what that referred to. I have tried to maintain a sense of humour, and I do think that not taking oneself too seriously is good for our well-being. We live in a challenging international environment, certainly the most challenging I can recall as a diplomat for almost 38 years. An energy crisis, war in Ukraine, the pandemic, tension with China over Taiwan, to name a few. I nonetheless remain positive and confident about Cayman's future. It is a very special place. You have so much to be proud of. A top 10 global financial services sector, which carried us through COVID. A world-beating tourism product, which is the envy of the region. The culinary capital of the Caribbean. We are one of the safest places in the region, though I do recognise the recent spate of armed robberies is a concern, but I have full confidence in our police to arrest those responsible. The combination of strong Caymanian culture, tradition and heritage, with an openness to talent from all over the world, over 130 nationalities, I am told, that is a powerful combination. The diversity gives Cayman great strength. It means we punch above our small size. I have used my role and my social media pages to bring different elements in our community together more. We should value the relative peace and tranquility that we enjoy on these islands. We may have a noisy and vibrant democracy. I know not everyone is happy with it, but let us all be clear that it is better than living under authoritarianism and fear. So please enjoy the festive season with family and friends, but please do so responsibly. Please do not drink and drive and do travel carefully on our roads. We all have a responsibility to keep our community safe over the festive season. So let me end by wishing everybody a very happy Christmas and the very best wishes for 2023. God bless the Cayman Islands. <laughs>